to be there, and uh -huh. their moms are making them typing. continue to go to college. Okay. So a lot of them are hungry and are trying to move on, but you do get a mixed batch, I think. Of people. So they've been doing yeoman's work, uh, trying to teach critical thinking to that world of students. So without any further ado, Paul and Gary. Okay, thank you. So, yes, Gary and I have been teaching for three years now, I believe, just before COVID, a uh, course on scientific skepticism. Um, and that's what we'd like to present is a, um, kind of an overview of the course, uh, telling you about the content, but also uh, I want, we want to focus your attention uh, on uh, skills, skills, skills. This is really the goal of the course. We could. We can tell about content all day, but that's really, I don't feel like it's our job, uh, nor do I feel like they would believe us uh, necessarily. Uh, but a few formalities, let's see, uh, today is in honor of uh, Ray Hyman, and I should mention just my one, my one connection, my wife took your course as an undergraduate, I believe we've talked about this briefly, but um, uh, back in, I don't know, 1980, whatever, and uh, you were her favorite. And so, um, uh, so there's that. Um, let's see, uh, other formalities. Um, hopefully we won't be repeating too many of the XKCD comics that were shown in the previous talk, uh, but we do feel like XKCD, uh, like we could teach the entire course, uh, and I, it's heavily influenced, I sneak them in a lot. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I can share the collection later if people are interested. Uh, let's see, anything else that we should, right? so uh, I teach physics, actually is my, like my primary teaching responsibility. Uh, I am, uh, you know, out of my league on many of the topics that we include in this course. I, we're not, uh, Gary teaches chemistry and uh, neither of us are doctors, neither of us are I don't know, a long list of Statistic. statisticians, uh, crop scientists, you name it, that's, that's not us, right? And we try, we, we really do, but it is not us. We're a lot better than we used to. <laughs> right. Um, by the way, can people hear... Can I, I, Gary or not? Yeah, can people hear Gary, though? Because I, I can only kind of hear Gary. No. I can't, no. I can't really hear you on the How about now? No. Um, I don't think your mic's on. Now? Yes, sir. But you got a mask on. You're looking at it. I can take medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the title of our actual course, not this talk, I, I submitted another title that I couldn't remember. Uh, is scientific skepticism, someone is wrong on the internet, so why do you made famous by XKCD? Okay. Our, the timing for us launching this class was sort of ironic. We picked this title, we'd advertised it the year before, things were clearly wrong on the internet, and then COVID hits, right, as we're like, rolling it out, and then things are wrong on the internet took on an entirely different dimension. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, the, the, the need for this course has grown exponentially. Um, so, uh, maybe just a touch more background of the course uh, and the context that we teach in. We have been increasingly concerned with uh, many, uh, numerous trends. Uh, pseudoscientists being brought for, to campus, for example. Uh, people trying to shut down our Wi-Fi because of uh, 5G concerns. Uh, people bringing in um, speakers that we thought were completely inappropriate on other topics as well, okay? Uh, and the, the, to the list of topics has shifted around over the last uh, five years or so. And our students are always kind of a moving target, and like, you know, I don't know, three or four years ago, 5G was a screaming hot topic, and plus or minus it causing COVID, people have moved on. They're, they're either convinced it's, you know, causing all the things, or they're over it. And GMOs were really hot, there was a, there was a, thing we went through was a, uh, like an initiative maybe right. 10 years ago. And everybody was very inflamed about that. Now it's, you people are either in or they're out, you know, uh, trying to engage students with problems that they're engaged by, that's, you know, most of the stuff we talk about a 
applies to any number of things. And so kind of keeping this socially centered has been one of the main things we've had to do. Right, so we wanted to teach this course. Uh, we really wanted to focus on um, socially important topics. It's not something that we get to do as science teachers. We teach, I teach my little bit of physics, my Newton's laws and whatever, and occasionally I'll get to nuclear energy or something societally important. Um, but mostly um, trying to train people to, I don't know, do physical therapy or whatever. Um, trying to teach them what torque is. Uh, likewise with Gary, uh, uh, trying to get them to know enough chemistry to take their biology course. Okay. So yes, we. Um, uh, so we to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we were very excited to put this together, and um, I don't know. And so yes, we want to talk about what we teach, uh, uh, but also a lot about how we teach it, uh, as you'll see. Okay. Uh, outline for this. Uh, right. Uh, so we we've already started talking about motivation. We'll tell you a little bit about our students, but really the short answer is they're all over the map. Uh, we'll talk about the curriculum, as again, again uh, with these two emphasis, uh, content and skills, and uh, and then, well, op uh, open this up for discussion. On the, on the curriculum, I, Paul and I have a, both ever growing libraries, but my best estimate is if you wanted to have a, a good basic primer on teaching what we do, you need to read about somewhere between five and 10,000 pages. That would be kind of like that. It would be cool if you knew this before you start. Um, and so that's not something you can do in 10 weeks. Um, and so there's been a lot of compromises and usable, like I'm a minimalist in general. I'm just like, how little can you possibly know exceptionally well and get utility out of it? Given the size of the task, it was going to be minimalized in some way. So. All right. I always like hearing how people got into skepticism, so I'll give you just a short version of my background. Uh, as a little kid, Harry Beatty was my hero, right? So, including the, the whole debunking uh, aspect of them, uh, not just the magic. Um, uh, my college roommate, uh, my college roommate's dad was friends with James Randi, so I heard about James Randi a fair amount, but really my connection there is I went to a physics conference where he was a guest speaker on a skepticism uh, panel and gave a, a room full of like 1,500 physicists a really hard time for not doing their job at, at uh, getting rid of some of the nonsense. Yeah. Okay? Um, and I took it to heart. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I, when I was still trying to learn how to teach chemistry, uh, The Demon Haunted Night, that was Sagan's, maybe his last book, dropped on my desk, and I read that. And basically, he's like, if you've got the information that keeps the lights on, you'd better start talking because the lights are going out. Uh, that was in the mid-90s, and it's like, well, there goes that career. And so that's something, I mean, it just it absolutely like punched straight through me. How I've expressed that is very a great deal, but yeah, more and more formally up until like you know three years ago we got a class that's just like just going straight out. Right, like, and then um, on the positive side, uh, the as anybody recognize the couple, I assume so. Carl Sagan. The, Sagan. The the Snopes people. Um, oh, so, that's so oh. So Gary and I, I believe that both followed. Uh, Barbara. Snopes before, which Snopes it back in the, uh, the yeah, that's whatever right. they called it, the discussion group days. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and anyway, and then on the other side, um, before my first kid was born, we, we had the birthing class, and I was hit with the vaccine nonsense. Uh, and I found myself at the library looking up studies, and here's this guy with 11, n equals 11, and here's the one out of Denmark or Toronto or whatever it was with n equals, um, you know, I don't know, 10,000 or something, and I, okay, that settled it for me. Uh, but these are the sorts of things that we want our students to be able to do because they're going to leave us, and they'll be all new, well, issues to, to uh, you know, to land on their plate. 
Okay, uh, I live in Eugene, so I, I snuck that one in. It, it comes up often. It, we used to have, for example, New Age Radio on uh, NPR on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. but I didn't know. Uh, anyway, and uh, uh, later I got dragged into the GMO debate uh, by friends as well, so uh, you may, may, many of you may recognize. Uh, I don't know if Gary has other comments on this. All right, we move on. Okay, um, so oh. many of you, you know, most, uh, we assume most people in this room know what skeptics do. Our students don't. Um, I don't we're, we're actually rather confused as to how they find us uh, and why they find us and why they sign up for our course. Um, I, I think some for very good reasons and the, the very specific reasons and other ones, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so we want to convince our students that they can do this, right? And so Susan's here, uh, but you know, <laughs> some, uh, do you need to be a scientist to pull this off? Well, some of the other people, uh, you know, were appropriately displayed, uh, they are um, scientists and science communicators, but there are other roles for people. Uh, our role as uh, educators, we're hoping, you know, that we're making a difference. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, right, but the, oh, the, the, the real question here is can we train our students to be skeptics in 10 weeks? That's our, that's our task. And I get it as much, they, they tend to think they're skeptical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and some of them are, like, you know, it's like just it's tools improvement. They're not wrong, particularly, but we can still sharpen up some skills. And some of them are less skeptical than I suppose, I think is how we're supposed to say it. Uh, but in any case, we, we can do some meaningful skill improvement. But I get a whole lot of like, I don't think I can do science. It's like science is too complicated or whatever. And it's like, you know, for me that's just nonsensical. It's like, I don't think you're going to be a PhD chemist, although if you want to be, we can talk about it. On the other hand, the idea that you couldn't understand, like, how science works and get some science kind of traction on big ideas, Anybody, anybody can. And like, there's a big improvement in like, wait, I can, I can actually do, maybe not do science, but I can read science in a thoughtful way that is informative instead of hoping that whatever I saw on Facebook last is still what's on Twitter because I don't know what to do. Okay, so for the, uh, the next couple of slides, I want to talk about some of the concerns that we had uh, going into this course, okay, uh, and in particular, I want to tell you about uh, physics education research. Is a slight side note, uh, and one of the one of the lessons that physics educators people people started studying uh, what works in teaching physics, you know, some 30 years ago, uh, and and they were really shocked to find out that lecturing made no difference, and the reason was that people have deeply held beliefs about physics, and telling them that their beliefs are wrong made no, no difference, right? And the, the thing that did work uh, is getting people to discuss their ideas. So, so my, at least my course, and I believe Gary's as well, is strongly influenced by this idea of, I could tell you stuff, but that's probably not the most effective way to go about this. Okay, so if we want to make progress, getting people to talk uh, is um, is a big piece, right? And if you go to physics uh, conferences, uh, I, by the way, this this talk I should mention uh, has been adapted for me presenting this to a group of physics educators, uh, and so there may be a few slides that there are a few phrases that sneak in. Uh, so physics conferences, we talk about uh, thinking fast and slow quite a bit. Okay, uh, it's it's quite central to what we do now. That's like 600 of that five to 10,000 pages. But if you really wanted to do this, you probably could do that more. Okay, and what do our students believe? Well, it varies. We we do pre and post tests, uh, questionnaires of various sorts. Uh, this is just one snapshot of one class. Um, but uh, they, they vary all over the map. Um, uh, so for example, uh, I, have, I was quite worried about, uh, or curious and worried that 
about climate and how much that was going to be a battle. Turned out uh, that one student over there uh, is typical, right? It just maybe one. Uh, and then what, if they even show up for class, so they don't have to fight them. Yeah, we can do. Could you just explain what those bars are about? This number of students uh, that uh, I pull them on their beliefs. What's the horizontal axis? Oh, and so this is, yeah, so this is number of students who think that uh, uh, climate change is real. This is number who, uh, uh, well, this is the denier side on this, one, this particular graph. Okay, I don't have many on that one. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, GMOs, uh, they're, they're all over the map. Vaccines, they're, uh, this class is all over the map, but the next year they were all good, and then I, I, that, my discussion went completely different up on uh, that topic. Um, and they, like I, I said, they do shift. Like, I, I, I have the climate change one online as well. So like, the further to the right they are, the more strongly they're saying. The, the questions we ask them are a little more detailed. Oh, yes, like, thank you. You know, climate change is really caused by humans, you know, like that sort of thing. And I started out just three years ago with, it was kind of ripply. It was pretty well represented all across. And then the last, this last one I gave, I think I got A7, everything else was A9s and 10s. I mean, it's all moved over to like the, we believe. Oh, that's good. The evidence is really solid, which, you know, I don't know if we're doing anything about it, but, you know, believing in something's happening is a nice first step. And, <laughs> The other vaccines kind of back that direction. Yeah. Uh, uh, in regards to the previous talk, the, we have belief in alternative medicine all over the map. Okay, and, and that seems to be fairly typical. Um, uh, I have not seen the uh, COVID uh, deniers. All right, oh, that one might be presented backwards. I, I, like to flip around which way I ask the question uh, so that they're not second guessing what my beliefs are. Chemtrails were very hot for about two or three years. Yeah. No, they, I mean, they really were very, very hot. And now it's yes. like, what? Um, yes, in fact, a quick, quick uh, it does. A story on that one uh, in a park uh, when the GMO measure was uh, coming around for with uh, petitions, you know, to, uh, for the ballot measure, uh, and the, somebody wanted me to sign, uh, and I was like, okay, what, what, why should I, you know, w what's your rationale on this? And he starts pointing up at the sky to the the chemtrails, that that that's the reason. Why we should ban GMOs? Anyway, Alpha. Um, <laughs> cool. I'm afraid. Not the first time that conspiracies are wrapped into each other in really peculiar ways. Again, we live in new genes, or I live in new genes. Um, okay, so uh, this uh, gets uh, starts to get into what the class is about. Uh, it also uh, the second point just goes into. One of my biggest fears in teaching this course is that uh, that half the course would uh, half the class rather would be conspiracy theorists, and I would have to argue with them endlessly. Okay, uh, and this would have, this took a lot of thought going into it as to how we were going to set up the course uh, and what the, what we started coming up with were ground rules, right? So. We, Teaching it, it, being in an educational setting has some major advantages and some major disadvantages. Um, we have to put up with whoever shows up with us and try and make them better. Um, uh, but it also means that they want their grade, so we have certain incentives to, uh, to, to leverage. Okay, so, but and the ground the rules. Paul and I, like, we teach physical sciences. I mean, nobody's going to get super exercised over the value of R and the gas. You know, it's just like, oh, okay. And so we don't have, I mean, I, I think some of our colleagues in social sciences and maybe English stuff, there's, I think they work with chewier stuff with their students on a regular basis. Uh, we had no idea. And I mean, I, and I think, certainly to my delight, and I think Paul, based on what he said, it's just like, if you just say, here's, here's ways that people mistreat each other. We don't do that here. They've been great. They've really been great. <laughs> oh. Oh, a gish gallop and... Quiz time. Anybody wants to, what is a Gish Gallop? Dwayne Gish. Yes, Dwayne Gish. It's famous for 
change the subject really quick and, and rapid fire machine gun uh, approach to to debate. So you can't get okay. it in. So if one of my students wants to hit me with the, hit the class with the topic after topic after topic, then we're not going to tolerate it. We, we will calmly take one issue at a time and we can investigate it if you want, but we're not moving on until we get some class consensus as to whether we should do that um, uh, sort of things. Okay? Right? Um, right? We're, we're, we try to uh, push logical fallacies, uh, not too many, but uh, just enough to, to make this manageable. Uh, for example, um, well, no appeals to authority. I heard it from somebody. Anyway, uh, Hitchens Razor, right? Uh, Hitchens Razor. Anything that can be stated without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Thank right. you, great. Thank you. We could count on this audience. Anything that can be stated That's without limited. evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Yeah. Yes. We can go investigate with the, and again, we get into more detail once later, like no one study is definitive and so on. We get into, into these nitty gritty details. Um, anyway, so. Um, uh, Right. Oh, uh, yes. Topics not covered. Just tell me the batteries. Do I take this one or? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's things that. <laughs> so there's a the NOM is a non-overlapping magisteria. It was a, an idea that Gould uh, supported, and it was just sort of like there there are things that science is particularly good at answering. You know, like does this drug stop this disease? There's other things like why am I here? We might get there with science someday, but we're not really approaching that yet. And so, you know, that, that's one of the major themes in my class. I, I talk about epistemologies, ways of understanding the world, and we all use multiple epistemologies from time to, over times and places. And so we just keep going back. It's sort of like, is this? Are we approaching this scientifically or not? I don't care if you get your shot. I don't care. But is that is that decision being based in a science the way? <laughs> Okay, or not. And then, you know, if you thought it should be science and it's not, then maybe that's something for you to think about. But, you know, so religion is, is you know, how the human species has tried to answer things like what happens after I'm not here and why am I here in the first place. And have fun. Many people get a lot of pleasure out of that, and I'll agree. Nonetheless, not science. Right, in terms of science, flat earth would seem to fall under the purview of a physicist. Um, but I try to take the approach in this class that we are going to investigate things. And I can't do flat earth with a straight face. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Um, it just, I can't take it seriously. I can't pull that one off. I, I, and, and flat earth is a fun one for me. I, I can do practically anything with a straight face and with a mask. I can do absolutely anything with a straight face. Uh, but, Sometimes I found it useful to think, like, the whole class is like, wait, people actually think that? That's not just some meme? And it's like, yeah, they, they, they actually do. And it's just like, whoa, what? And so, like, sometimes it's a safe place to explore some of the ideas. Like, mm -hmm. nobody's going to have you know, kind of any defensive barriers or whatever. So you just, like, walk through. And then when it gets to something where it's like, wait, I, I can't go there, it's like, all right, same tools. Just got to walk past it. Right, one more, uh, one more quiz question. Friend, uh, folk? friend of a friend. Friend of a friend. Yes, we, we don't uh, anything that's just rumor hearsay. People yeah. are saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, people say. Um, people my mom's say. sister's ex-brother-in-law had a really bad experience with the vaccine. Okay, um, we're going to go through the the next bunch rather quickly. Uh, just. We have a series of readings. You'll see down bottom. Feel free to bug us later for uh, details. Um, we, we take many of the content kinds of things um, and, yeah, again, put them in reading. Uh, our goal here, once again, is to build skeptics. And so um, a big part of this is having the metacognition to actually use the tools that we're trying to develop. OK, so people being aware um, of you know, when, 
what their biases are, right? Uh, like uh, like Paul was talking earlier this morning. Um, uh, we're not experts. We're, we're not psychologists adding to our list of things that we're not. Um, we're trying to generate some self-reflection and, and uh, be aware of some of the issues, but it's only a 10-week course. We can't do this um, in any great depth. A lot of the work I do with them is like asking them to think about their thinking. It's like literally that. It's like, does, that, does this feel okay? You know, like, and then, you know, if you feel good about where you're going, that raises the question, is like, am I just like finding the things that support what I already think? Or if I feel bad, but just like raising that level of awareness, it's like, how is my brain doing this travel? It's, it seems to make it fairly difficult. Uh, but again, to, to give you some flavor of the course, uh, precautionary principle. I'm not trying to teach anything specific. I'm trying to raise the issue of, okay, here's a new technology. What, what aspects of that uh, would make this something that we should worry about versus not worry about it? Okay, and I try to get, I'm trying to get debate going in the course. I'm not trying to answer that question for them. Okay, uh, trying to get them to reflect on these. And a big piece of what I've done with this is like, uh, we talked about weeds a lot in my class. And like, it's a theme in my commission class, it's like, you're gonna die. I mean, I don't know that for sure. It's just worked for everybody so far. <laughs> but but the, the, you know, it's just like, so like, what should you be afraid of? You know, should I be afraid of Roundup? But then it's like, you know, there are these things called weeds. It's very likely based on human history that we're going to do something about it. What's your proposal? I mean, so it can be pick them by hand. I don't, I don't actually care. I had about half a class convinced. What would you like to do? Because it's, it's very, very likely that it's but some devil is going to. It's not. Okay. Uh, one, one stand. There's an XKCD comment for everything. Uh, even the, there's like even the smallest details. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but. Um, I was just putting uh, it on me like this. Three beach trips instead of two increases our odds of getting shot by a swimming dog carrying a handgun by its mouth by 50 percent, uh, and reminder: a 50 percent increase in a tiny risk is still tiny. Anyway, um, uh, we there's one for everything. Um, all right, uh, psychology. Uh, we do try to give them some idea of thinking fast and slow. Okay, uh, and here what we're trying to get them to do is realize, you know, that. that or be aware of when they're thinking things through and when the, they're just being triggered, okay? And if they're being triggered, that should be when they say, wait a minute, hold on, slow down. Let's maybe look this up. All right, okay, uh, we go into uh, some social psychology as well, uh, Cahan in particular, um, uh, right? Uh, People being influenced by their by their peers uh, and so on, and, and their identity being tied up with whatever issue it might be, right? Being on one side of the issue or the other. Okay. Um, once again, an XKCD comic to go with that. Yes. This is one of them, like that. What the evidence supports is that like as education increases, the amount of information, correct information presented, goes up. The quality of the argumentation goes up, but not necessarily does it lead to anything like more skeptical or rational outcome. And so uh, it, it's an ongoing thing that troubles me. How's that? <laughs> this, is our, this is our tiny shot across the mouth. It's like, okay, so while you're out there getting all the smart and educated and stuff, like, still try to, you know, there are probably righter and wronger answers. If we could tilt towards the right ones, that would be cool. Okay, we make some attempt at teaching them about bad statistics. We're not going to a 10 week course with maybe maybe two classes. We're not going to teach them to be statisticians. Um, uh, I'm not a statistician, but we, we try to give them some idea of, uh, for example, p hacking, uh, correlation versus causation. Obviously, you're happy to see uh, Bayes' theorem show up on, uh, on the previous one. I, I'm actually really surprised that how well they understand it if you just give them a picture that there's, I didn't put it up, but I should have, uh, the rectangle with uh, false positives and false negatives um, and true positives and true negatives and, and 
they're better at it than, than I expect. And right. this, this script, by and large, does not have any great deal of mathematical sophistication. I mean, um, but the ideas, they, I mean, again, it's like science. They're not going to be PhD chemists, probably. But, like, can you look at a graph and tell you, tell, you know, just like, think like stock market stuff. It's like if you always just show the top 1%, it looks really volatile, which is a standard thing to do. And then, you know, if you show the whole graph, it's like something changed. I mean, it's so like lying with graphs. I talk to them about a lot. But base theorem is actually this pretty sophisticated, complicated thing that I sometimes partly understand. But we can work through a really basic sort of like, hey, we're just trying to get the error bars in and acknowledge that they're there. How, how well do we know how much trouble we're in? Mm -hmm. And they, they, they're fine with it. Right, and so th this is very much uh, an activity-based class as much as we can. Uh, and so, for example, p-hacking, uh, uh, 538 has a wonderful applet where you can select which subsets of data you want, and you can look at what the result is, and you look at it, it gives you the p-value, uh, and whether it's publishable or not. Okay, and it's like, oh, look, the Republicans are good for the economy with this subset of data, and they're terrible for the economy, statistically significantly bad for the economy with this other subset. Um, and we get them playing with such things. Right, so we, we get them uh, basically uh, misleading on the, with the same statistics, anyway. Um, it's fun. Um, all right, but, all right, so I don't have to show the XKCD on that one because that was already up on the uh, previous talk. Okay, all right. Um, getting back to skills, we, we do talk about media, uh, and in particular where the weak links are for science. We're always focused on science. I don't really want to talk about the, the media in general. Um, uh, but uh, we, we get into how to spot bad sources of information and, uh, of course, get them to follow up, right? It's the skill, is one of the main skills is, um, okay, somebody said this. Where did they get the info? Because they're a media source, they're not a science source. It had to come from somewhere. And it's amazing how often that just leads back to somebody peddling uh, supplements or whatever. <laughs> The, uh, what, it's an idea from journalism, if it bleeds, it leads. So like, the media is where most of us get most of our news about most things, right? Um, and certainly that's true for the students on things like science topics. It's, but the media sells clicks. That's what they do. And if they also provide news, that's cool too. Um, so that just, just, I mean, I, I don't really care what your motivation is. I would just like to know what it is. And if you understand, exciting, flashy headlines sell clicks. When you go into it, and then Paul's part too. It's just like, and who's selling me what? So media literacy. A lot of these topics. I mean, it shows up on our syllabus like this week we're gonna do, you know, psychology or whatever. But they just keep getting woven in. I mean, it's just it's more like a knitting project or a crocheting project than it is like a, you know, a death march. It feels a little death marchy, but there's definitely a loop, 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 loop. Oh, loop, 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 loop. You know. Um. I uh, well, sure we'll sneak in the XKCD. I think we have to, we, we gotta get going. But um, anyway, uh, so snow. I heard it on Snopes, and it's like uh, who debunked it? Oh, Snopes. Anyway, uh, um, all right. Uh, we spend time on the, the, trying to do a short list of logical fallacies. These are these are I find much harder to get them. They're not hard for the students to understand. Uh, they are much harder to spot in the wild um, than, than I anticipated. I, I find they, they do better on the, statist the statistics, for example. Uh, we spend time on the process of science. Uh, name, in, in particular, the, the reproducibility crisis is a nice, uh, a nice topic, I find. Uh, is whether science is, is broken because of uh, uh, like the previous speaker, like Mark was saying, uh, many studies are wrong. Right, like, okay, what do we do with that? Okay. I was really happy my class this spring was just like, so, I mean, I didn't, I, I put it up as reproducibility crisis, and they came back with kind of like, isn't this just sort of how this goes? And like, that was my takeaway, and so, you know, it's one of those, like, proud future moments, because, like, yeah, 
you try stuff. Sometimes people cheat, actually. A lot of times they're just wrong for whatever reason. And you loop around and do it again until you get it right. Or righter. Or less wrong. Or whatever. <laughs> Be less wrong. Uh, okay, we spent a fair amount of time on science communication, how to get people to talk to each other and their friends and relatives, right? And it says how to talk to an idiot, and to, we mean that in the most affectionate manner. Um, uh, we focus on, well, two major approaches. Uh, uh, one is to get, uh, get people to think about their own uh, reasons for believing things. Uh, the other, another one, uh, e grip is uh, you first connect with people's emotions and and try to make some human connection to them and then bring it around. Uh, I personally, I tie this one, and since I don't have too many t climate deniers, again, just kind of giving you a flavor of the course. Um, I tie this into uh, climate, and I, I, we do role playing where one person plays the climate denier of some sort, some flavor. Uh, one of the six Americans, if you know the Yale study. Uh, I recommend it. Um, and then there, I, I arm them with the 100 Climate Myths uh, website as well that they can pick a bunch and, and argue with. Okay, uh, hopefully not all 100. Uh, there's a guy named John Cook. He's who I think has the, did the 100 Climate Myths, but he's developed a game called Cranky Uncle. Yeah. Um, which is just solid. It's like a, you know, and I have the kids play it for points. I mean, it's like, and, you know, gamifying is a way to get people to do stuff. but. Basically, you know, it starts out like, and it just runs through all the kinds of different bad argumentations and stuff, and you just kind of keep re-engaging, you know, your cranky uncle at Thanksgiving. I, I, I tell students, it's like, being a skeptic isn't necessarily good for your social life. <laughs> <laughs> Relations or, yeah. but like, but, but, so I mean, I really make an effort to, to sort of temper this with humanity. Like, most of us want to be able to talk to our uncle. Uh, you know, some people are completely comfortable cutting people out of their lives. The more people say that, that's what really are. And so, like the you know how to talk to an idiot. There is an entire approach. It's just like you know, like you can how could you think that? Which that's not a good conversation starter. But if you if you approach somebody with humility and actual curiosity, it's like wow, I read the same thing and I I didn't get there. Help me out. And people like being asked to be help. Help you know. Help help me. I, I, help me out here. And, and all of a sudden, there's a dialogue happening, and then dialogue, then something can happen, as opposed to just. <coughs> uh, continue with with my quiz. Uh, the Muppet character that I inserted <laughs> is. is that fun? Uh, Dr. Bunsen, honeydew, yes, and my last name is Bunsen, so that they make the, anyway, I sneak him in a lot. Uh, I'm going to move on here. Um, right, so many of these topics we, we actually spend not that much time on. I really want to get to the actual, uh, the, well, the other thing that we do, um, right? Uh, but just uh, want to mention the, just a few here. Life cycle analysis, if somebody says uh, electric cars or whatever is better, uh, the question is that we're trying to instill in our students is like, okay, what's the data? By how much? What are, what are the issues, right? And none of this, it feels better kind of thing, okay? And th th this one is a, kind of a nice illustration, just really quickly, like the, the process that Paul and I use. It's like, when, when I tell my students they want this, you can't do this stuff alone because you will screw up. You've got biases you can't see. You're going to trip over stuff. So like normally, non-COVID times, Paul and I have been talking about this at least a couple times a week for years now. COVID has really interrupted that. So I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing this. This is an awesome activity. I mean, we share each other's Moodle sites with each other. I could have known that, you know, life's busy and I'm never going to click on the link, bottom line. But just like, you know, just getting ready for this talk, I'm just like, oh, cool. But like that whole sense of like, you've got to do it as a community or it does fail. Science is a community <laughs> enterprise. Yeah, and these are really hard to do. I don't set my students loose on this. These are million-dollar projects to so investigate which thing is better and why. Um, uh, let's see. All right, so uh, turning this around, uh, getting to the other aspect of the course, we spend, I don't know, if not every week, most weeks, uh, diving into a, science, a socially relevant <laughs> science topic uh, and trying to get them to at least tentatively pick apart uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, not sure, or you know, or unknown, uh, perhaps as well. Okay. Um, 
Uh, I like medical studies, uh, but we go into all kinds of things. Uh, 5G was a popular one, it still is. Uh, it gets them to look at the data. Go find the worst thing that anybody is saying about 5G. Go find the original studies. Let's look at the data. Okay, and they, they always lead back to the same study or two or three, uh, and so I've already looked at the data, even though I pretend I haven't. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it's remarkably messy, unlike uh, what uh, what the signs on my neighbor's uh, lawns would have you think. Uh, it, it says uh, if you're a male rat, you should be exposed to 5G. That would be good for you. But a female, anyway, something like that. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I, but yes, we spend a, we, we do this with uh, we we do this with I don't know 5G or uh, Roundup or uh, uh, GMOs and cancer or uh, whatever topics they seem interested in. Uh, it varies. Um, and that's that's like again loop back the risk assessment like the 5G one. It's like I'm, I'm absolutely sure that cell phones kill a lot of people. And among other things, driving. distracted driving is yes. really bad for you. I mean, and so like where in your like risk landscape, where do you want to start drawing lines and super dig in? I mean, uh, and I pretend I don't care which way the results go, which way the class decides, but actually I do. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Uh, just, we're, we're getting close to the end here. I, I think we're about on time. Um, so, a long list of things uh, that we might dive into. Uh, it to various extent. Uh, so many have been raised today. Uh, many haven't. Okay. Um, we we try to train them in class to, to investigate things, and then we do. Well, I do a mini project, and then it builds up to a, a bigger project. Uh, and what we're trying to do is not have a book report, but actually have them present some evidence on both sides and say why they're they're rejecting one thing over another thing. Um, uh, why they like this study over that study and so on, right? And not just say, I found this paper that says it's bad. Okay, because that, I know that just doesn't, uh, uh, I, I still feel like I, this could be tweaked and tweaked again, um, and it's by a moving target and they'll find ways around whatever I come up with. But um, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's what we do. Other uh, comments on this one? Okay. Right. Um, right. So you know. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Uh, as we've said, I think, I think we said earlier, we're not experts on any of these topics. Uh, almost done. Right. Uh, uh, I can fake it well. Right. Uh, here's the. Uh, hobby of uh, trying to convince experts that you know what you're what you're saying, right? Um, and uh, anyway, from engineering over to literary criticism, uh, with all due respect to people who do literary criticism. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, uh, just about done here. Uh, assessment. Uh, this is tricky. We were just talking uh, outside. Uh, uh, how do we know what we're doing is actually doing anything? Right, and we're coming at this wrong from all kinds of angles. Uh, we we do get well anecdotal evidence from people. Um, uh, I'll just sneak in uh, some of my anecdotes, but I would like to. I'd love to do this more rigorously. Uh, COVID has not helped. Okay, uh, but uh, so I, coming back around, I mentioned earlier that I, one of my fears was having conspiracy theories in the last theorists. And the last time I taught the course, I had two. Oh wow! Yeah, two, two, right? Uh, one, I think I had no impact on. He didn't come to class either, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I don't know what to, you know, just uh, okay, fine. Uh, I think he did his final project on chemtrails, even uh, oh. this might be uh, uh, giving him a, a you know a, a frowny face or whatever. Wouldn't that one. Uh, uh, the other guy, um, without telling too much information, I don't think, um, very knowledgeable guy. He was a former military, knew lots of things that I didn't know. Uh, or seemed to know lots of things I didn't know, and, and I, I was always hesitant to cut him off 
because uh, the discussion was interesting, but we never had time to dive into all of his uh, diversions either. Um, and then by the end, you know, and he told me uh, at, at the end of the course that he was dubious that any of the tools that we were working on were going to be at all helpful. And then a family member, a friend, or something had a, had a medical issue uh, toward the end of the course, and he needed to navigate. Uh, the appropriate action or avoid bad actions and he said man this actually really helped oh wow so oh, that's great. good uh, anecdotes I know um, I, I don't like my, I don't like anecdotes but uh, but still uh, I think you know at least at times we're doing okay um, I got mostly anecdotes too it's like but They'll do them as testimonials. It's just like, hey, this thing we were doing in class, I had a young woman this spring that she's a bartender, and it was some argumentation strategy we'd just been doing. And she'd had some fellow get pretty testy with her at the bar, and she's like, I just did it, and it worked. It's like, if this, is, this is changing my life. You know? <laughs> it's not necessarily the goal I had for the class. On the other hand, if your shift was a little better, and maybe the other shifts are better, then it hasn't been a total failure. But yeah, they'll come and help. it's not just they talk to me about it, they'll talk to each other about it. Are the surveys different again? Um, yeah, yes, although sometimes I, because of timing I have not gotten good data. Uh, they tend to disappear on me as soon as they hand in a, a project and then I'm like, oh, I should have put some incentive on that or got it earlier. Right? And you'll see it in the, in the projects too, it's a paper usually is what we have them do. It, it, it's like, you know, I came into this thinking, whatever, and I dug through it, and I, I can't support that view anymore. I'm not necessarily going to change my behavior, but I, I realize that whatever I'm basing it on isn't the science. And I'm just like, that's a win. That's a win. Mm -hmm. right. But in terms of assessment, I, I want to know what they're thinking about, say, vaccines in particular, but I also want to know what they're, uh, how they're using the tools and whether that's internalized in any way. Um, uh, and so I... I it, which is a much harder question, and they, they might only they might only need the tools every so often. They haven't had it yet, so I, you know, it's, that's a tricky one. Um, but yes, I want I'd like to know that better. All right, I think we're we're pretty much. Yay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yes. So, so uh, we are looking to discuss with people uh, the, this material and, uh, and whether it works for people and how it can be used in other contexts. Uh, high school we were talking, middle school, uh, but if they shouldn't be getting to us um, uh, without without some exposure. The, the approach, as far as Paul and I can tell, the approach we've taken is a little different. There's, there are other university classes out there that are in this vein, but uh, like it had Carl Bergson's uh, came up there earlier. Yes, the right. University of Washington, uh, the Calling Bullshit uh, course. That's the title of it. That, that, 